Coffee Break German, Lesson 5. Welcome back to Coffee Break German. This is the course which will help you learn German along with me, Mark. And me, Thomas. Also, Mark, wie geht's dir heute? Mir geht's ausgezeichnet. Und du? Ja, that's not completely correct. You would say und dir. Uh, why would I say und dir and not und du? I thought und du meant and you. Yeah, but do you remember the phrase, wie geht's dir? That means uh, how goes it to you? Yes. So I have to say and to you. Und yes. dir. Ah, okay. Let's try that again then. So if you start by asking me how I'm feeling. Wie geht's dir, Mark? Uh, mir geht's ausgezeichnet. Und dir? Mir geht's auch gut. Danke. Okay. So in this lesson of Coffee Break German, our theme is introducing members of your family. The idea is that you might be on holiday in a German-speaking part of the world, and you could be introducing the people that you're traveling with to German speakers. So we're going to learn some members of the family, and then we'll also learn how to introduce them and see what their names are. So, are we ready to get started? Ja, bist du fertig? Ja, also los geht's. Los geht's. Before we get started on the new topic, let's just review a few things we learned the last lesson. Okay, so last lesson we were looking at uh, I come from Germany, for example. Yes, ich komme aus Deutschland. Ich komme aus Deutschland. And we also learned to say I live in Scotland. Ich wohne in Schottland. Ich wohne in Schottland. So it was ich komme aus and ich wohne in. Yes, so the wohne more is a temporary state. Yeah. Now, there was also something quite tricky that we had to remember if we combine these two sentences. So the idea where you come from Scotland, but you live in Germany, for example. So can we have that full sentence? I come from Scotland, but I live in Germany. Or, but now I live in Germany. Ich komme aus Schottland, aber jetzt wohne ich in Deutschland. So literally in English, that would be, I come from Scotland, but now live I in Germany. Ja, richtig. The verb and the subject just change places. So, ich komme aus Schottland, aber jetzt wohne ich in Deutschland. Sehr gut. Okay, let's practice this a little before we, we move on. Um, perhaps you could give us three sentences to translate using this construction. Okay. I come from Paris, but now I live in Tokyo. Okay, so we're going to give our listeners some time to think this through. But just before we do, Paris in German is? Paris. Okay, not too difficult. And Tokyo? Tokyo. Excellent. So, I come from Paris, but now I live in Tokyo. So I think that would be, ich komme aus Paris, aber jetzt wohne ich in Tokyo. Sehr gut, prima. Okay, so what's our next one? I come from Sweden, but now I live in Switzerland. Okay, uh, Sweden in German. Is would it would be Schweden. Schweden, Schweden, yeah. Okay, so I come from Sweden, but now I live in Switzerland. And there's something I've got to remember about Switzerland, okay? I come from Sweden, but now I live in Switzerland. I think that would be, ich komme aus Schweden, aber jetzt wohne ich in der Schweiz. Yeah, so you have to pay attention on the day of the article. So it's in der Schweiz, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so ich komme aus Schweden, aber jetzt wohne ich in der Schweiz. Ausgezeichnet. Also, the, the next one. Last one. I come from the USA, but now I live here in Scotland. Okay, how do you say here in German? It sounds very similar. It's here. Here. Okay, <laughs> very similar indeed. So can we just put that in in the same word order? I live here in Scotland. Ich wohne hier in Schottland. Yeah. Okay, so I come from the USA, but now I live here in Scotland.
I think that would be Ich komme aus den USA, aber jetzt wohne ich hier in Schottland. Richtig. Okay, so we've got to remember, it's aus den USA and aus der Schweiz. Yeah, these are two exceptions. Excellent. Okay, I think it's time to move on to our new theme, and that is the theme of the family. Let's begin by looking at some individual words. Let's think of maybe four people in our family. We might think of mother, father, brother, and sister. So what is the word for mother in German? Die Mutter. So is that the mother? Yeah. Die Mutter. 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 Okay, let's hear that again. Die Mutter. Die Mutter. Okay, so the mother. Die Mutter. Die Mutter. And what would the sister be? Die Schwester. Die Schwester. Die Schwester. Okay, so we've got die Mutter and die Schwester. Now, what about the father? Der Vater. Okay, now I'm seeing already there's a different <laughs> word for the here. Der Vater. Der Vater. Okay, so we've got der Vater and... Uh, What would brother be? Der Bruder. Der Bruder. Der Bruder. Der Bruder. So, die Mutter. Die Mutter. Die Schwester. Die Schwester. Der Vater. Der Vater. Der Bruder. Der Bruder. Now, I'm guessing that there are different words for the depending on whether these words are masculine or feminine. Is that correct? Yes. Brother, father, masculine, sister, mother, feminine. Okay, so in this respect, it's very like other languages that I'm familiar with, French and Spanish and so on, where we have masculine nouns and feminine nouns. Okay? Yeah, but in German, we have another gender that is neither masculine nor feminine, but we come back to that later and look at it again. Okay. It was probably too good to be true then, just having those two genders of masculine and feminine. We'll come back to that a little later. How would I say my mother, for example? My mother. I would say meine Mutter. Meine Mutter. Meine Mutter. Meine Mutter. And so would it be meine Schwester? Yeah. Or my sister. So my sister, meine Schwester. Meine Schwester. Can I say meine Bruder? No, they had changes again because of the gender. Okay, so what would my brother be? It would be mein Bruder. Mein Bruder. Mein Bruder. Mein Bruder. And therefore, presumably, mein Vater. Yeah, mein Vater. So my father, mein Vater. Mein Vater. Okay, I would like to introduce my father to someone or my brother to someone. How would I say, this is my brother? Das ist mein Bruder. So this is, is das ist. Ja. Das ist. Das ist mein Bruder. Das ist mein Bruder. So could I say, das ist mein Vater. Das ist mein Vater. Okay. Do I need to change the das ist when I'm talking about my mother or my sister? Well, that's the good news. You don't have to. Excellent. So I can say, das ist meine Mutter. Yes, das ist meine Mutter. This is my mother. And for this is my sister, I would say, das ist meine Schwester. Das ist meine Schwester, ja. So das ist can be used for masculine and for feminine people. Always the same. Excellent. Okay, this is my father. He is called. Now we already learned the word heißen. Which means to be called. Yes, but now we have to change it a little. So I would say, er heißt Hans, for example. Okay, er heißt Hans. Yes, so you have to adjust the verb, er heißt, in comparison to ich heiße. Okay, is that the same as du heißt? Yes, in that particular case it's the same. Okay, so it's ich heiße, I am called, or my name is, du heißt, you, the informal form, yeah. are called And then er heißt. Er heißt, yeah. Exactly the same word. But only in this case, it's not always the same. 
So just for this verb. Ja. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So er heißt Hans. Das ist mein Vater. Er heißt Hans. Yes. Or mein, you could also say, mein Vater heißt Hans. As in, my father is called Hans. Okay. Mein Vater heißt Hans. Can I use the same verb for meine Mutter heißt Nicole? Yeah. The verbs are also don't depend on the gender. They're okay. always the same. Okay. So, meine Mutter heißt Nicole. Mein Vater heißt Hans. Sehr gut. Yeah. Okay. So, what's the word for she? Sie. Is that not the word for you in the formal form? Yes, it's the same. It might be a little bit confusing sometimes. What's interesting, if if you write the formal C, you write it with a capital S at the start, but the C, like she, is written with a normal S. Okay, excellent. So, uh, if I'm saying my mother is called, I would say meine Mutter heißt, and if I'm, if I'm saying she is called, sie heißt. Yeah. Yeah. And I can now introduce my whole family, presumably. Yes. I can say, meine Mutter heißt Nicole. Mein Vater heißt Hans. Meine Schwester heißt Julia. Und mein Bruder heißt Thomas. Very good. We've not yet talked about sons and daughters. So if I have... A son, if, how would we say the son? Der Sohn. Der Sohn. And uh, the daughter? Die Tochter. Die Tochter. Die Tochter. Okay. Is there a word for a child? Just the, 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 the child, not necessarily a son or a daughter. Yeah, that's where the new gender comes in. It's called das Kind. Okay. So this is the one that's not masculine and not feminine. Let's say it again. Das Kind. Das Kind. So that means the child. And this is where we're not talking about a feminine or a masculine noun, but uh, what's the word for it? It's called neuter. Neuter. Okay. So masculine, feminine and neuter. Let's just go through this. It's masculine, der Sohn. Der Sohn. Die Tochter. Die Tochter. And das Kind. Das Kind. Okay. It's perhaps worth calling on our grammar guru just to explain this a little more. So over to you. Okay, so today's grammar topic is the gender of nouns in German. We briefly mentioned the gender of nouns in lesson two. And if you've learnt any other languages, like French or Spanish, for example, you may be familiar with the idea of grammatical gender and how it causes changes to words like articles and adjectives. In German, like in French and Spanish, we have masculine and feminine. But as Thomas has just explained, there's also a third gender, which is called neuter. And we've already had some examples of these. We've had der Sohn, meaning the son, die Tochter, that's the daughter, and then das Kind, the child. So here, you can hear that the word for the changes depending on the gender of the noun. In fact, there's a technical term for the word for the in a language. It's called the definite article. Der is therefore the masculine definite article, die the feminine definite article, and das the neuter. Der Sohn, die Tochter, das Kind. But it's not only people that have grammatical gender in German. Things do too. Unfortunately, it's not always as easy to remember the genders for objects as it is for people. So whenever you learn a new noun in German, it's best to learn it along with its definite article, just as we've been doing today. As we go through the lessons, you'll begin to pick up some tips for guessing which gender a particular noun is. But for now, just try to learn the gender of the word when you're learning a new word. Let's do this with some more examples. This time with some objects. You should be able to guess what they are. We've got der Computer, which is masculine, die Bank, which is feminine, and das Haus, that's neuter. Now, although these three words sound almost exactly the same as in English, only the first two are spelt the same. The third, das Haus, 
is spelt a little bit differently. It's also worth noting here that in German, nouns are written with capital letters. So Haus would be spelt capital H, A, U, S. There's more information in this week's lesson notes about the spelling of German nouns. But for now, let's go back to Mark and Thomas to learn more about introducing members of your family. Hopefully that makes more sense now. So Mark, let's think back and what we learned last lesson. If somebody is about to introduce their family members to you, do you know how to respond or say, pleased to meet you? Can I say, es freut mich? Yeah, that's what we learned last lesson. What was the more complex one? We had another one, it's called, es freut mich, sie kennenzulernen. Es freut mich, sie kennenzulernen. Es freut mich, sie kennenzulernen. Can you slow that last word down? Kennen zu lernen. Kennen zu lernen. What does that literally mean? To get to know you. Okay, so kennen zu lernen. Es freut mich, sie kennen zu lernen. Ja, es freut mich, sie kennen zu lernen. Now, if someone were introducing their son or daughter to me, would I use that formal Z form there? Is there another way of saying that in a more informal way. We can just replace the formal C with an informal version. This time it would be dich. Dich. So presumably that's related to du and dir. Dir, du, dir, dich. Okay, so would I say es freut mich dich kennenzulernen? Yes, everything else stays the same, you just replace the C. So that's the, the mich then is similar to mir as in mir geht's gut. Es freut mich. Is it kind of like to me? Yeah, it's a joy to me. Okay, it's a joy to me, you to get to know. To get, yeah, to get yeah. to know you. Okay, so the dich is the same for the dear. So es freut mich, dich kennenzulernen, or es freut mich, sie kennenzulernen, in a more formal Formal. form. Let's hear those two phrases again. Es freut mich, sie kennenzulernen, or the informal one. Es freut mich, dich kennenzulernen. Excellent. Now, we'll be joining Julia in our cultural correspondence section. However, this time we're saving that for the bonus episode. Julia has got some interesting information about family life in Germany. And that will be available in the bonus episode for our members. So that is all for today. Das reicht für heute. You're now able to talk a little bit about your family and to introduce them to your new found German friends. Okay. Uh, If you want to find out a little more about how to talk about your family, then we will be coming back to this topic later in our course and we'll learn uh, other members of your family and also talk a little more about who you happen to be traveling with, for example. That's coming up in a later lesson. So, Mark, I've got a question for you. Let's see if you can understand it. Mark, was lernen wir nächstes Mal? Um, I think you're asking, uh, what are we learning next time? Yes, yeah. in the next lesson. Okay, well, next lesson we're going to be learning uh, some numbers. Another very important thing to be able to cope with while we're traveling in a German-speaking country. So we'll be looking at numbers and maybe also some prices for things too. Das klingt gut. Aber it sounds good. Now, one thing that is important to mention about that next lesson is that it's not coming exactly next week. We're actually taking a mid-season break and in two weeks' time we'll be back with another episode of Coffee Break German. So that means that you can expect the next lesson of Coffee Break German on... Wednesday, the 6th of March. Until then, I'd like to say Danke and Auf Wiedersehen. Bis zum nächsten Mal.
This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.